Hello Internet! I am Xenon, and welcome to another Let's Play episode on the Terrascape server. Um, since last time I've been working very hard on my little village thing, you just caught a tiny glimpse of it there. Um, and yeah, I've come up with this pattern. So, I think that looks pretty cool. Um, that's a lot of pistons, so the darker bits are just upside down pistons. And I worked out that that was something like 16 stacks, so... I had to go do more strip mining after that last lot, and yeah. I think I'll be making an iron farm fairly soon, because I do not want to farm iron anymore. I've got heaps of every other resource now, just no iron. So, I also ran into another problem. Like, all these villages you see here, I managed to breed from ten doors. So, that should normally get you three villages, maybe four. It got me, like, thirty, because I managed to trigger the infinite breeding glitch. And anything I read on the wiki says that the infinite breeding glitch um, is caused by moving a villager, like one villager, um, I think, yeah, you have one villager inside the boundaries, and then you move of the village and move all the rest of them outside, and then all the ones that are outside try to breed with the one in the middle, and then, because they all try to do that, they occasionally breed with each other, which makes it glitch out and you get heaps. But, I also discovered another way to breed them, is to just move the doors, like, five blocks downwards. If I move those doors, like, you can see that's the floor they're standing on. So, if the villagers aren't staying directly on that, uh, like, if I move these doors down so they're on this block instead of that one, um, I'll get infinite breeding. And all I'm doing is moving the doors. They're all, it makes them all out of bounds, and apparently that means they try to breed with the doors, which makes them breed with each other. I don't know. It's it's stupid. They need to rewrite this villager breeding code. It's terrible. But yeah, so basically, um, I've been testing this out to see if I can like stagger heights and put other doors here. Um, because I can still get valid doors doing this. Um, but that doesn't work, because I've tried three out of f the four. So I've, I've done a test with, say, one on this height and then another three rows of doors up. And that still triggers infinite breeding, so I've just kind of given up. What I'm going to do is every time I need to have a row like this to make the doors valid, I'm just going to leave that empty. So it'll be a bit less space efficient, but it's still a lot more efficient than any other design that's out there. So it'll do for now. Um, I'll figure something else out for my iron golem farm. I think next I'll... actually, it might even be this episode. I'm not doing it right now, but... Yeah, I'll, I'll skip to some other farm construction, probably a mushroom farm uh, that I'll do next, and then maybe episode after that, Iron Golem farm or something. Yeah, um, just thought I'd update you on this before I put the doors in, because it's uh, much easier to see the pattern and what it looks like without villagers running everywhere. So yeah, um, I think it's pretty cool. Let me know what you think. Put a lot of time and effort into this. Like You wouldn't believe how annoying it is to keep running up and down to flip pistons different ways and try out different patterns and configurations and ugh, took me a fair while, but yeah. Oh, and I've also uh, put a nether portal over here so I can go between there and my home base over there really easily, so that works out well. So yeah, um, I'm going to stop recording for now and I'll see you for what for you will be a second, for me it'll probably be a fair while until I finish this and then get working on my next thing, so yeah, catch you in a bit. Okay, so I've uh, put some doors in, just thought I'd show you quickly. Um, I've got almost 200 villagers, I think it's somewhere around like 180, and I've done about half the doors, so you can see how uh, space efficient this design is, because having that many villages in such a small area is pretty nuts. And also notice the lack of um, children villages, that means that they've stopped breeding, which means that I haven't triggered infinite breeding. Which is awesome, because I was trying to avoid that at all costs. One, it lags up the server. Um, two, I'm glitched on a block. Uh, but three, <laughs> um, it just makes them like completely fill that pen and it becomes too hard to trade with anything. And that's the purpose of this one. So if we come over here, I think you can see the pattern. So this row here is halfway in my pattern, so I haven't actually even reached halfway yet. Although if you look at the orange wall, I think I've got more orange in that half by that one or two blocks, but yeah, not much. 
yeah, these are all the doors I've got. Uh, it turns out that golems can spawn down here, so they basically don't see the uh, pistons as transparent blocks. And I was down here before, and I'm like, oh, I think I've got like seven or eight down here. Said that to Sin. And then he came and had a look, and he's like, oh, no, I count five. And then we both went through and had a look. That's why some of these doors are open, though, on me. And um, I came out with six after that, and he came out with nine. So we, we agreed that there were several golems, and we'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, um, this works pretty well. I think I might just leave it at that. I'm not even going to bother filling the rest of this, because I've got enough villages as it is. Right. For trading purposes, you want to have some room left in the pen. So they move around, but yeah. Just thought I'd show you what it ended up like. Um, now I can start working on my emerald collection. Get some glowstone off these guys. I've seen at least one of these dudes has glowstone. But, yeah, down if I know which one. Ugh, I already saw him. He's an idiot. No one wants that. Although the enchants I looked on the wiki are only level 5 to 19 anyway, so they're completely pointless. And I've got a lot of these guys. I think I saw one that was offering like... 22 paper for an emerald. But yeah, I'll uh, search for all of these. Oh, that's the other thing. I've got two iron golems up here, so obviously they can spawn on transparent blocks, which is rather weird because I don't think anything else can. I know breeding can do it, so I guess iron golems are similar to breeding in the way things work. But yeah, um, anyway, on to the next project. I'll see you there. Okay guys, welcome back. I um, oh, I said I'd work on my mushroom farm ideas and that's what I've been doing. So I've actually already recorded this once but it turned out that I didn't get any of my own audio uh, and that's because I would have plugged my headphones in after I started Fraps. Like after I opened Fraps up before I recorded and that makes it not register. So hooray, I get to talk about this again. Uh, basically I'll explain the mushroom spreading mechanics first once this cow dies he wasn't there last time but yeah a mushroom can spread um, anywhere within a 3x3x3 three by three by three area around it and this is annoying shut up brain uh, so it can go up a block like that so if that brown mushroom um, that brown wall block was a mushroom then it could go up like that or it can spread down to one there and from that, oh, it has a uh, 1 in 100 chance per tick to choose a block to spread, and if it can, it will spread there in that area. So note that it can't spread to the block it's sitting on, and it can't spread to the block where the mushroom is itself. So it's not um, even 100% chance once it decides it will spread. But from that, uh, once it spreads, it will then choose another block within a 3x3x3 three by three by three area around it, and will then spread to that, so if if it can. So it could spread to there, then to there, then to there or whatever, or any of these yellow ones around it. And so in that that's basically the maximum efficiency with spreading if you manage to capture all of this area in a mushroom farm. But there's another issue that in a nine by nine by three high area around it, so nine by nine is this wooden section. Uh, you can only have a maximum of five mushrooms and then they will not spread anymore. So yeah, it, it makes mushroom farms rather difficult to handle. But this is um, what actually got me started in redstone, I think, mushroom farms. Because I wanted something. So I think that was my first attempt and you can see there's five mushrooms sitting around it now. Um, this is actually pretty inefficient because Mushrooms only have a like a 25% chance to spread down or up a block and 50% chance to spread on their own level. So they're more likely to spread on their own level and you're better off targeting that. But from that I think I did a layout I planned like this. So you might be able to see what's wrong with this straight away is that in a 9 by 9 area around any of these I've already got four mushrooms. So as soon as one grows that's the cap um, and they won't spread further. But I didn't realize that and I went ahead and built it. I did something stupid because I've got a bud on every block so I'm actually wasting redstone. Yeah, um, 
from that I think I got a little smarter started doing it similar to that maybe yes yep so here I would have planted a mushroom there and allowed it to spread uh, but as you can see the problem with this is that it will only detect when a mushroom spreads to this back line and none of these have even though I don't have the seed mushroom there anymore uh, so this will jam up pretty easily and you won't get your harvest and I think I continued on in that kind of stupid way because you can see I still got buds on either side of it and still continued on with it until I figured out how to do something like this I think that's another one down there um, but yeah I figured out how to do something like this where I have the seed mushroom here and then as you can see there's buds there so those two blocks if anything spreads to there at a harvest whole way along the back wall and then another two there and then there's three in the roof there so if it goes there the only two spots where it uh, won't trigger a bud is right there and there so as you can see I've got three there so that's still not going to cause this to jam up and that's perfectly okay so once I do trigger one floor drops out you can lose some onto that so it's not even 100% efficient yeah that's the uh, general gist of it and this thing does work um, it's just turns out it's very slow because you're waiting on one mushroom to spread and then when it does spread I've given it the highest chance possible to get a second one but that turns out hardly ever happens because it's still subject to the normal mushroom pickiness of which block it wants to go to so it turns out this while being efficient for spreading mechanics is still inefficient for a design and it's also highly inefficient in redstone you can see how much I've used there then there's pistons under the floor and all sorts of crud so just recently I've um, revisited this because I need mushroom farm and I'm going for this kind of layout um, except I've still changed I think I've eliminated this back row and the idea with this is even though it's not efficient with the spreading mechanics I have more mushrooms going along and that will allow me to harvest faster because there's more chance that um, they will spread so if we come in here you can see I've got four seed mushrooms laid out and the idea here is that I'd have one bud next to every mushroom so ignore the other buds so there'd be one there, ignore that one, one here and that when that gets planted there or spreads to there it will trigger this entire row to push it off so that will allow the ones that spread to here to then try to spread again before that gets triggered but the problem with this is that it's um, it, it works but it's probably going to jam up at some point because this mushroom here has that one and that one within its 9x9 radius so already there's uh, three mushrooms here so it spreads there and one of those spreads then it will never trigger this bud and it will never get harvested and if this one does similar stuff and doesn't spread to there you can jam it up um, I think it will eventually unjam itself but it can still be fairly inefficient so that's when I then started trying to add buds on the other side of it and in that it didn't really work because it was just making a kind of clock thing so I came over and did this one so I just did a little bit of a redesign alternated um, pistons side to side so I've still got a bud next to each uh, mushroom but this bud triggers these two to push this bud triggers these two to push and it just alternates the entire way down um, and so every single block will, can be harvested and any time a mushroom spreads this will trigger and you notice I don't have a bud here for this one to get triggered but for one to spread there this mushroom would have to spread to there and then trigger the um, like the yellow wall kind of spread so if it goes to there and there it happens like fairly instant I think it's going to do that and this one here would trigger the bud so to push it and it'll be fine so yeah this one works it's a little slow because I've only got four mushrooms um, but it does work and it will never jam which is the important bit so I can go ahead mass produce this build a whole bunch and um, get me a lot of mushrooms basically but um, 
one problem I have is if you recall earlier in this episode I showed you the piston floor of my village um, yeah uh, remember I said that was like 16 stacks of pistons I have pretty much no iron left now so if I want to go large scale on something like this I'm going to need a lot of pistons but I have no iron so for now mushroom farm is going to just stay in my creative world and next thing I'm going to work on is an iron farm so I'm, I'm completely and utterly sick of strip mining it's slow and I'd rather just sit there and let iron come to me so I'll do that next and then once I've got enough resources I'll go ahead and build this on the server and um, show you guys once it's done and we can see what kind of rates I get out of it but yeah um, I guess that's all for now so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time